In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, the Lord of all the worlds to whom we belong and to whom is our return. And may his choicest blessings go to the highest of Allah's creation. Our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most generous in companionship, the most gentle in speech, indeed the most eloquent ambassador for Islam and humanity at large, indeed a mercy unto all mankind, indeed the best of teachers, the finest exemplar of the Quran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> well, what can I say? Anyway, <clears throat> let me just relax here. <laughs> uh, you know, when I was uh, given this topic, I've got about four or five speeches on this topic. And this morning I decided to talk about something else. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. And uh, some of you may not like what I'm going to share with you today. But today, inshallah, I want to share with you some harsh realities about our Muslim schools. It's not to diminish anyone. I'm not here to massage your egos. It's also about myself, to interrogate what we do and how we go about doing it. The time for excuses is over. We need to look at ourselves and ask ourselves, what can we do differently? And I want to just go through with you with a visualizing exercise. And I want you to participate. And remember, it is said that if you do not change 48 hours after a presentation, it's unlikely you're going to change. We have been to many, many conferences. How much of it we have implemented in our school? It reminds me of a story of a principal who went to a conference as an autocrat, and he came back as a hypocrite. <laughs> so I pray, inshallah, that we understand who we are and what our purpose is. So I want you to close your eyes, each one of you, and focus. Close your eyes. <laughs> your eyes are open. <laughs> Love is blind, right? But close your eyes. Can you do that, please? Right? I want you to imagine that you're taking a drive in the countryside. It's autumnal landscape. The leaves are falling. There in the distance, you can see a crowd of people. As you become closer to the crowd, you recognize it is a funeral. Who do you see? You see your parents, your learners, the teachers. You actually see the whole community. And you're quite intrigued. You park off the car and you unobtrusively walk to the graveside. And you wonder, who died? You peek into the grave, and my gosh, it is your own funeral. The funeral is over. The teachers are saying things about you. Your learners are saying things about you. And people are talking, and you listen with rapt attention. What are they saying? What are they saying? You can open your eyes. <clears throat> How was that experience? Was it a pleasant experience? I want to, was it a pleasant experience? Yeah. How many of you said, my gosh, I'm so glad I died? <laughs> no. Now, it's a very important thing, a very critical thing, because here we have Amana. And I say this to you because I deal with family issues, drug issues, prostitution amongst the Ummah. We are in crisis. And I tell people, the Ummah is bleeding. And sometimes the last hope is you, the educator. You are the last hope. And I really believe, you know, that we need to do things differently, radically differently. A few weeks ago, in Durban, we had a conference, also an AMPS conference. The topic was educating for the 21st century. And the subtitle, I thought, was very profound, what got us here ain't going to get us there. What got us here ain't going to get us there. And I was challenged with the task of finding out what are the contemporary issues affecting Muslim schools throughout the world. And inshallah, I'm going to very quickly share those issues with you. Because when you talk about moving to the future, it really means firstly recognizing where you are. And remember this, 
If you do the same things the same way, expect the same results. And nobody can change except yourself. Nobody except yourself. Are you ready to change? Are you ready to do things differently? You speak English? It's very important. You've got to participate because this must have cost amps a lot of money for you to come here. Allah bless you. And when I come to this country, I also get enriched by you. No one has a monopoly of knowledge. You've got to make this commitment. And I'll just share with you a few stories very, very quickly. A few weeks ago, at our school, I said to the teachers, I said to the management committee, I'm worried. It, it almost appears that the world in which we are operating, the curriculum, which is so static, seems to be completely different from the world of the child. And they say every learner comes to school with three things, an attitude, a baggage of values, and an IQ. And it seems, really, that we cut off from them. We are so concerned about examinations. That is the end all and be all what we do. And many of those kids, let me tell you this, are crying out for help. There's no place for mediocrity. And it's not so much who you want the learners to be, but do they want to be you? Do they want to be you? These are very important and critical questions. I know every school has the unique issues, the dynamics of the board, staff room dynamics, team dynamics. But what is critical, that we, whilst we celebrate, yes, indeed, we've got no control over the outcome, but we have complete control of the effort. What kind of effort is it? How organized are we? How critical are we? How creative are we? So I'm going to show you those issues. And in your own mind, I want you to think about your own school, whether those issues have any relevance. So when I showed these issues to the South African audience, and all of them said each of these issues also prevails in our country. Is it uh, readable? Yeah. Right. Can yeah. someone read it for me, please? Uh, would you read that for me, please? Yeah, up? yeah, please. It's giving children and young people an understanding of the role of Islam in the modern world. The main challenge is to present a range of Islamic perspectives on local and global issues in a holistic and comprehensive manner without prejudice. That's the the next one. Second one is the quality of teachers in terms of their Islamic and wider knowledge and commitment to the holistic Islamic development of children. 